crazy project to determine the top 10 composers in history. We're now up to the 19th century and opera. And the question comes up, is opera a whole different thing, a different animal? Because after all, you're using music here to tell a story, and that changes everything. But yet, uh, an opera is still a piece. It's a piece of music. I think it counts. And especially when you're talking about the two people who dominated 19th century opera, Wagner in Germany, and then in Italy, Verdi. Those two guys, they inherited their traditions and took them to whole new realms. I want to investigate them a little bit and compare them a little, looking at just two techniques. One, the, te the light motif technique, and then just their use of harmony, the element of harmony. The technique of light motifs is thought of as you know, being t totally associated with Wagner. The idea is simple. It just means taking a little motif or part of a theme or a theme and associating it with a character or an element of the story. What's amazing about, about Wagner's use of this is when he'll take a light motif and transform it in ways that makes it almost unrecognizable. The most famous example is the beginning of Act One and the end in Act Three. Watch then sequentially. But the significant thing there is that rising four note figure which reappears and reappears and reappears throughout the opera. At the end of Act Three, when Tristan has been wounded and he's dying, Wagner turns it, changes it just a little. So there's the, the rising motive. It changed just a little, but you see what I, if you hear what I mean, that it's now more major minor oriented, more diatonic. It's more old-fashioned in a way, harmonically, but more tragic. These very elemental chords are going to suck him in. People don't associate Verdi as much with this idea of leitmotifs, and they certainly don't call it that, talking about Italian opera, but he did it too in his own way. He tended not to be so disguised about it. He tended to be more direct. He wanted you to hear these things. In um, Othello, his version of Shakespeare's Othello, uh, when in Act Two, when Iago's trying to make Otella jealous, he says, Oh, beware of jealousy, my lord. Jealousy's the green eyed monster. Now, by Act Three, Otello's decided that he's going to, his wife is unfaithful, he's going to take revenge. that theme and he turns it into to, to counterpoint. So if you unravel that. So in a way, Othello is getting entangled in the counterpoint of this motif, of this theme. So it's very sophisticated, but more direct, not, you know, not so disguised uh, as Wagner, Wagner would sometimes do. Now, harmony. Wagner is the great pathbreaker in 19th century harmony. He took tonality, the major and minor keys, and he really pushed them out of bounds. There's this glorious moment in Du Valkyr. Wotan, the father, is putting the father of Brunhilde, who's a very rambunctious, rebellious daughter, he's putting her into this sleeping state. And as he kind of pronounces the spell, these chords sort of express her descending into this state. And yet, in another way, the chords, if you hear in the left hand, are, are ascending. They're rising at the same time. If you see what I mean by those chords, so you have the left hand, and I'm doing this. It's just a magical moment. If you know the you know, uh, master of harmony? Oh, he was when he wanted to be. There's this scene I love in Falstaff in Act 3, at the, the last scene. Falstaff's been told to report to Windsor Park. He thinks he's going to have this rendezvous with Alice Ford. Actually, he's going to be tricked. 
and you hear in the orchestra. And it goes through these different, you know, transformations, but finally we hear this. Uh, it seems to be settling down. the church bells chiming midnight. Una, due, tre, quattro, and so on. Verdi makes it mysterious by giving each one this very pungent harmony. It sings una, due, tre, quattro, and so on. Cinque, Listen, this one really gets me. Mezzanotte. It captures beautifully that he thinks he knows why he's there, you know, but boy, he's in for cruel surprise. Is opera a separate thing, a separate creature? Well, maybe, but I don't think so. These two guys are among the great composers ever. The specificity, the craft, the mastery is just always awesome to me.